Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to share some search strategies when looking for printed music editions in MuseCat. It is not always easy, because most of the records for printed editions were imported from the book publications. The detail in these records varies considerably, and a lot of shortcuts were taken in the books, which means that details are missing in our records. This video will focus on how to search if you do not know the A1 or B1 number. It helps to understand what printed music is already in RISM. From the printed books, we have added A1, individual prints before 1800, meaning music books by a single composer, and B1, printed anthologies from 1500 to 1700. Plus, there are some prints after 1800 that were not in the books, but are now in MuseCat. In total, there are over 110,000 printed editions in MuseCat. This is a very high percentage of what we estimate was published before 1800. This means that there is a very high chance that your print is in MuseCat, and if you do not find it right away, you should try a different search strategy. The first rule of thumb is, if your composer was born before 1770, the print is highly likely to be in MuseCat. If you don't find it, search again, and if you still don't find it, search again. We do not want duplicates in the database. If you really cannot find the print in MuseCat, then you can create a new record, and this will be shown in a different video. Most music printed after 1800 is not in MuseCat, but please always search first because we do have some editions post-1800. I actually like to search in the public catalog and in MuseCat because both tools offer different ways of searching the records. I will switch back and forth between them in this video. I want to search for this print. We have three quartets by Donzi, printed by Schott in Mainz, and it's Opus 7. I will search using some words from the title page. I will limit to prints, but none of these are my edition. The wrong opus number, the wrong publisher, also not my edition, that's Munich, not Mainz. Opus 6, I want opus 7, and same thing, wrong opus number, wrong city, wrong publisher. So what if we try an advanced search? Donzi as the composer, and part of the title, no results. If I do a simpler search, what happens? Donzi, limit to prints, genre, quartets, these aren't my edition either. This is the Munich print, but we have Mainz, Munich again, and Munich. Let's try the publisher then. You can search by Danzi, limit to prints, and use the publisher filter. Be shot. I'll look at the genre filter. There are four, but I have six records. Let's go through the records one by one. Sonata, no, that's not what we have. Opus 17, part songs, no. Here's mine's and shot. The plate number 101. Let's check that. Yes, 101. It's the same. And let's even compare the keys. C minor, 
E flat F, C minor, E flat, and F. The record even says quartets at the top. The composer, the indication of a genre, the keys, the city, the publisher, and the plate number all convince me that this is the record that I need. But you can see that my title page and my genre did not help me find the record. Let's take a look at this record in MuseCat. There are only three dots for the title, and there is in fact no subject heading at all. The standardized title is the genre and it's in English. The lack of a title page transcription and a lack of a subject heading are both due to the fact that the record was imported from the books. In the book, entries were presented as lists, and to save space, titles were not repeated. This is why you see the three dots. Going back to the public catalog, you can click on Initial Entry to see the title that appeared at the top of this physical list. The lesson here is be aware that there are a lot of records like this in MuseCat. You will see this often. Revising these records is desirable and it's a big project, but this is where we need your help. After you add your holdings, you are free to revise this record. More details about revising records will be explained in a different video. There are other kinds of inconsistencies in the RISM records that might make it difficult to identify an edition. Sometimes different editions have been combined in RISM records. You have Trois Quatre, Book 1, Plate number 327. After you search, you will find that the RISM record is this one. The record says six quartets, but also book one and two in parentheses, and it lists two plate numbers, one of them in parentheses. So two editions were combined into one record. Note that different libraries have different volumes, and some do not indicate what volume they have. You can add your holdings and say you have the first book, for example. Adding your holdings is the easiest solution. However, if you have the time, it would be better to actually split this record so that we have one record for the first book and one record for the second book. That way, each publication has the correct title, keys, book number, plate number, etc. If you wish to do this, please contact us at the RISM Editorial Center because we will need to move the existing holdings to the appropriate record. Here's another example of combined editions. This note says that this record represents three different editions. And even these libraries have different editions. You might have the cross edition, or maybe your publisher is not even listed. Again, use your best judgment to decide if this is your record. If you add your holdings, it's helpful if you say what edition you have and give more information about your copy. Or you can split the record, but again, let us know and we will assist. Sometimes the RISM record will simply not contain enough information for you to match. The title here says Sonata 3, but what if you have six sonatas also published in Boston by Grappner and there are no other RISM records that even come close? Is this record really for all six sonatas? To be honest, I don't know. You will have to see all five of these copies to be sure, but contacting all these libraries is extremely unrealistic and time-consuming. You will have to use your best judgment to decide whether to use this record or to create a new record. Make a decision and hopefully other libraries in the future will examine their copies or perhaps a user of the online catalog will know more about the publisher or composer and will be able to assist. Use the comments and internal notes fields to communicate with other users. 
Our catalog, after all, is a work in progress. In conclusion, the majority of records for printed music and rhythm were imported from the books, where details vary and shortcuts were taken. Keep this in mind as you search for your edition in rhythm. If you have any doubts, you can always ask us at the Editorial Center. Thank you for your attention.